Over the years, I developed a personal style for presenting code, and people often ask me, why do you do it that way? I'm Daniel Steinberg, and in this video, I'll discuss syntax coloring, how I present code, and why. There are lots of little decisions I've made along the way, and it's actually been an evolution, and I keep changing. A simple decision we make is, will the background be light or dark? In my books, I leave it up to the reader. They can select dark mode or light mode for reading my books. In workshops, my classes typically request that I present the code with a dark background. And at conferences, it really depends on the room. For these videos, I'm impartial, but when I showed people the light background, they said they preferred the dark. The second little adjustment I make is particularly important in books, but I'm using it in slides as well, and that is tabs. Xcode generally uses four spaces for tabs, and this makes slides easy to read, except when you get to long lines, and now I have to split the line among two or more lines, and so I've gone to two spaces for tabs. I think it's still easy to see the hierarchy, and I'm less likely to have to split a line of code. When it comes to syntax coloring, I find all that information very helpful while I'm coding, but distracting when I'm watching or presenting slides. For instance, suppose I want to add a message property to this code. You miss what's been added. The syntax coloring doesn't really help at all. I've seen some people highlight the change like this, and that certainly calls your attention to it, but to me, again, all that syntax coloring is distracting from what I'm trying to express. I would rather remove all those colors, and then when I add the new property, I highlight that change in code that really sticks out for you. If I go further and change the text hello world to use that message instead, now you can see where it's been used. I also like to use spacing ahead of time to show you where the change is going to appear. It helps you prepare yourself for something that's going to go there. So you can see a space between the struct and the body lines, and so when I insert the message, you're prepared for it to slide right in there. There's no need for you to reorient yourself to the code because nothing else has moved. And again, I'm using message now in the text. Although all of my workshops now use live coding, my presentations don't. At its best, it still takes my time and attention away from my presentation as I concentrate on my code. At its worst, you may be distracted by the popovers for code completions and maybe errors that I make in typing. Instead, I might present the code before and show you that this is what it looks like on the screen and, and maybe say, that doesn't look like a globe. Maybe I want to color it blue or something. And so I want it to look more like this. And the way I can accomplish that is by adding this line of code. I tend to use a lot of extensions in my code examples. That's so that we can focus on just the part that we want to see and not have to worry about what's happening in the rest of the code where no changes are happening. And so back to this example, instead of having all of the struct be in one piece, I'll often take the part that conforms to the view protocol and put it in an extension. Now I place the base struct at the top. And what that means is when I'm just talking about changes to the struct piece, I can just show that part of the code and not clutter the screen with things that aren't going to change. And so I might add the message property there. Now I can return to the view code, draw your attention to the line containing text, remove the hard-coded hello world, and replace it with message. I've seen books and presenters with different house styles where they don't show you everything. And I find it hard to keep everything in my head. I understand they don't want to keep showing you the full code listing over and over again, but they'll show you something like this. They'll show you this struct with a content view, and then they'll say something like, let's add a message property to content view and just show you the code that's being added. Even in a book, I find this difficult to follow, and I'd rather see the code listed too many times than too few times. So even without coloring, I'd rather see the messages be inside of that struct so that I can see how it all fits together. In a presentation, I'll often hint at what's coming. So here I might highlight the hello world and mention that we're going to replace this hard-coded hello world with something that can be passed in dynamically. So we remove the hello world and we create a property called message as the value that text displays. We can continue the example by highlighting the hard-coded globe for the system name for the image. 
remove that and add a property called image name and then use that image name to display the image. Often in our code, we have a lot of elements that aren't necessary for the thing that we're explaining right now. So I might show you all the code and then indicate that this stuff isn't so important, so I'm going to get rid of it for now. And maybe I'll tighten up the V stack. Maybe that looks too tight, so I'll introduce a little spacing between the lines. And now we can better see how all the pieces fit together. I've got a content view. It contains a single computed property named body that returns some view. And the body is just a V stack that contains an image on top of a text. In fact, we might want to remove the surrounding code so we just focus on that V stack that we're presenting on the screen. All of the Chrome around it can be removed for now. I used to use animation a lot. I hardly use it at all anymore. In conference talks, I always used to use fades between slides unless I was using a magic move. And now I've eliminated the fades completely and people don't seem to miss it. And that's just a quick discussion of some of the reasons that I present code the way I do. Thank you.